during the Clone Wars, Anakin Skywalker was one of the most effective generals for the Republic. He was wise, powerful, and an inspiring leader who rarely lost any battles. He became the poster boy for the Jedi Order. The people of the Republic loved him, and for good reason. So with all this said, what if Anakin became a Jedi Master during the Clone Wars? In the second year of the Clone Wars, Anakin, Ahsoka, and Padme traveled to the Mon Calamari people to defend them against the invading Separatists. This was a horrific battle, fought in the depths of the ocean, but the Republic still prevailed and removed the Separatist threat. Anakin's reputation was only bolstered by this. Time and time again, he saved a civilization from unparalleled danger at the hands of the Separatists. Within the Republic and Coruscant, everyone knew Anakin Skywalker, and everyone knew that he was an extremely powerful general. When he returned to Coruscant after his victory, his successes would be celebrated. He was summoned into the council chambers where the 12 most powerful Jedi in the Order spoke to him. They asked him how the battle was, to which Anakin replied that the Mon Calamari is safe and that they have maintained their control over the sector of the galaxy. The council was very pleased. Amidst a galaxy in war, Anakin was arguably the most reliable Jedi general to be sent into combat. Yoda spoke and explained that the council has decided that the beginning of the Clone Wars has been his Jedi trial. The force has been watching him, testing him with the most difficult challenges in every conflict, and every time he prevails. Yoda then stands off his chair, igniting his green lightsaber. He announces that by the right of the council, the will of the force, they dub the Anakin Skywalker Jedi Master. Anakin was completely shocked and was not expecting this. With this announcement, Anakin became the youngest Jedi Master in history at only 20 years old. Something completely unheard of, but he was the chosen one. This was a title that Anakin didn't think he was close to. It was Jedi in their 40s who earned this rank. It is important to note here that Anakin getting granted the rank of Master this early does a few things. The most significant is Anakin's trust for the Jedi would grow, as he feels like they believe and put their faith in him. In the original timeline, the only reason Anakin was even put on the council was because Palpatine had requested it and Yoda and Mace had other intentions of Anakin spying on Palpatine. None of these reasons ever had anything to do with Anakin's qualifications, but now he was made a master because the council truly believed in his talents and results. The first thing that Anakin would do after telling his wife Padme is go to the restricted section of the Jedi Order. When you become a master, gaining access to the secret archives is arguably the most rewarding thing. Anakin had dreamed of this day for years. He had his master Obi-Wan accompany him and show him around, knowing how important today was. This was a prideful moment between the two, a task they had always discussed doing together. As they entered, Anakin took in the special sight he was seeing. Extremely large columns, full of text, artifacts, and knowledge. The most exciting thing about it was every single thing he saw he knew held importance, as not any ordinary Jedi could see it. As he marched the halls, he saw a room connected to the main area. As he entered, his eyes were hit with a blinding light as hundreds of Jedi and Sith holocrons were flashed in his face. Obi-Wan explained that since the beginning of the Order, the Jedi had collected as many holocrons as they could, each containing lots of knowledge. Anakin walked over to a Sith holocron curiously. As he picked it up, he heard a voice speak to him. The voice introduced themselves as Darth Nihilus. As Anakin looked over at Obi-Wan, Kenobi explained to him that many of the holocrons had been infused with someone's spirit, meaning that most of the Sith holocrons were actually ancient Sith Lords. Anakin would spend the next few weeks of his life glued inside the restricted section. He wanted to learn everything. Anakin felt very fortunate. He didn't waste a second when he was in there. He always found it interesting to see what the other masters were looking at when they were inside the secret archives. He would often see Fisto studying force techniques within water, and Quinlan Voss would always have a Sith holocron open. 
but no one questioned it. To be in this room, you were trusted with the most powerful and dangerous knowledge in the galaxy. Anakin focuses time on developing his force power, becoming proficient in techniques only available to few. The first thing that caught his eye was force judgement. This was a unique ability that allowed a Jedi Knight to expel lightning from their fingertips. It was essentially a less powerful version of Sith Lightning. He studied the theory of the ability inside the restricted section and then asked Jedi Master Plo Koon for tips, who was also extremely powerful in the ability. With time, Anakin got the hang of it and his yellow lightning became powerful. Other abilities that Anakin learned consisted of Force Cloak, a rare ability that he found deep within an ancient Jedi text. Force Cloak was a manipulation of light which allowed the user to become virtually invisible to the naked eye. He had never heard of this before, but as he continued reading about the ability, Ayla Secura appeared behind him and said that she could teach him the ability if he wanted. He asked her how she knew it, to which she replied that her master Quinlan Voss taught her. Over the following weeks, Anakin learnt the ability to cloak himself. Skywalker became so unbelievably powerful in such a short period of time. He continued to go on campaigns during the Clone Wars and with his elevated abilities won every battle. He was unstoppable and the Separatists didn't have a counter to his strength. This continued for the next year of his life. He had never been so dedicated to the Jedi Order and he felt really at home here and that his needs and wants were cared for. He had always found an excuse to blame the council and think they were failing in the past, but now he didn't think this anymore, he loved the Jedi. He spent his days in the restricted section, learning and practicing, and when he was in the field, he worked hard to ensure victory for the Republic. Everything was going good for Anakin Skywalker. The Jedi Council noticed this shift in his demeanor and approach to the Jedi and they were very pleased about it. When Adi Galia was murdered by the infamous Savage Opress, a position on the Jedi Council had opened up and they invited Anakin to take it. Without hesitation, Anakin promptly accepted, becoming the youngest member to join. Once again, the Council made this decision themselves without the influence from Palpatine or the Senate. Anakin's trust and belief in the Jedi continued to increase and he began to value them as true friends and family. Even Mace began to show his kindness to Anakin, noticing the work and effort he was putting in. And at the end of the day, that was all Windu cared about. Anakin's trust in the Jedi had officially been restored. This made Anakin less brash, hot-tempered and overall a better Jedi. When Ahsoka and Anakin were struggling to defend Kato Nemoidia from Separatist Invasion, they received an urgent message from Master Yoda, calling them back to Coruscant as the Jedi Temple had been bombed. We all know what happened. Ahsoka got framed for the bombing by Barriss Offee, who attempted to betray the real Republic to the galaxy. The Council, not demonstrating their faith in Anakin or his apprentice, expelled Ahsoka from the Order. This event ruptured Anakin's faith in the Jedi and was a leading factor to why he turned to the dark side. But in this story, the Council do trust Anakin and have faith that he would have taught his apprentice to not do this. Anakin convinces the Council that Ahsoka could never do something like this and that they have to give him time to prove it. Even though all the evidence pointed towards Ahsoka, they gave Anakin some time to prove that she was innocent before the trial went to the courts and this was because they now believed in Anakin. If Windu had an apprentice that was caught in legal trouble, they wouldn't immediately expel them, but believed that it might not be true because one of the best and most respected Jedi, Mace Windu, had trained them. The same applies here with Anakin. Anakin will be able to prove that Ahsoka is innocent and she would choose to stay in the Jedi Order as the Council hadn't cast her out. This was her Jedi trial and thus Ahsoka was promoted to a Jedi Knight at 17 years old, the youngest in the Order's history. Palpatine would notice all of these things in Anakin's life and even his demeanor when it came to the Jedi. Palpatine had been getting closer to Anakin, trying to subtly manipulate him to the dark side, placing him in situations that would force him to engage his anger, but it wasn't working. Because of this, he has to delay his plans. 
Instead, he decides to increase the pressure from the Separatists and begins battles across the galaxy. He is tactical, ensuring that the Separatists come away with a victory. Sidious initiates full-scale invasions of Alderaan and Kashyyyk, completely conquering both territories and placing the Separatists in the fantastic position. Losing the Wookiees as allies was a great loss. Over the course of months, Palpatine began to notice a shift on Coruscant. Discontent for the war was rising, and people began to slowly blame the Jedi for the continued fighting. The disillusionment that Palpatine had tried to create was finally here, and he knew that he just had to maintain the pressure from the Separatists. For a moment, he believed that he could genuinely win the war from the Separatist side, and then place himself as Emperor that way. But it was too early to tell. Anakin continues to roam the restricted section of the Jedi Order. He became obsessed with reading ancient texts from thousands of years before. He learned all about the ancient order, reading about the youngest grandmaster in history, Satil Shan, and how she conquered the Sith Empire. He learned the fascinating tale of Darth Revan, who constantly altered between the light and the dark. The motivating point in his story was love, which made Anakin's stomach drop as he thought about Padme. But Anakin learned it all. Although the holocrons were interesting, he spent most of his time with ancient texts and artifacts, which, in his opinion, stored the real knowledge. When he was reading a text about the beginning of the Force, he came across a species of aliens called the ang Team Monks. They immediately caught Anakin's eyes as he read further. The ang Team Monks are a reclusive group of Force-sensitive beings in the outer space. They were known for their deep connection to the Force, far greater than any human being. They reside on the remote planet of Cathol, practicing extremely rare and unique techniques that are almost inconceivable to the ordinary Force being. They are most notably known for a technique that transcends the possibilities of anyone in the Order. It is called Flow Walking. This ability mastered by the ang enabled them to navigate and perceive events within the Force, which allowed them to witness past and present occurrences by aligning themselves with the flow of the Force. To use this ability requires the strongest level of Force power. As Anakin interpreted what he was saying, he understood that he has the strongest innate connection to the Force in the Order's history, with the highest Force potential. No Jedi before him had been able to replicate this ability. If there was anyone who could learn it, it was him. He decides to travel to the Cathol system in hopes of locating the ang Team monks. Anakin tells the council about his expedition. Most of the council didn't believe in this tale, thinking it was just a myth. But Yoda had been around a while and knew some Jedi who tried to contact him. They only contacted with the beings they deemed worthy. Anakin left at once in search of the ang Ti. As he arrived in the Cathal system, he found nothing. Believing that they didn't exist, he plugged in his hyperspace coordinates back to Coruscant. However, as he jumped into hyperspace, he found himself unexpectedly drawn into the mysterious depths of the Cathal system through a unique hyperspace lane that he had never seen. As his vessel hurtled into the seemingly empty void, he was engulfed by a vacuum of air. Moments later, Anakin opened his eyes as he was greeted by the reclusive ang Team monks. They didn't speak any languages, but communicated through the Force. As they touched Anakin, he understood what they were saying. They explained that he held the most Force power of anyone they had ever met before. Anakin explains to the monks about the Force ability flow walking that he read about, and how he wishes to learn it in hopes of putting an end to the Clone Wars and saving lives. The monks could read Anakin's thoughts and feelings, and knew that his true intentions were pure. He was attempting to save people, and they knew that his power, it was possible. They explained to Anakin that they would teach him how to use it, but if he ever abuses his power, they have the ability to strip it away. As the Chosen One nods, his training begins. For weeks on end, he was in this Nexus realm with the monks, learning everything. They helped him to achieve balance before learning the ability, as to synchronize yourself with the flow of the force, you have to be completely balanced. This took time, but Anakin learnt how, and after a long grueling training experience, he made progress. At first, he could just see into his own past, watching himself grow up on Tatooine with his mother Shmi. But as things progressed, he began to see more developed things. It was at this point when he realized how dangerous this ability was and how he had to be very careful. 
One day, when Anakin trained with the Ang T, he was able to use his ability successfully, but he had no control over what he was shown. His mind was thrusted into another memory as he saw a young boy on Naboo with his family. Anakin was immediately confused, but he let the ability flow freely. Attempting to fixate on one thing may cause the vision to extinguish. As the force guided him, he followed the boy around Naboo. Naboo was clearly different from when he last saw it, indicating to Anakin that this was a long time ago, beyond when he was born. But as he remained in the vision, he saw another man introduce himself to the boy, calling himself Plagueis. The young boy responded, calling himself Sheev Palpatine. Within mere seconds, Anakin learned everything about Palpatine's past, how he grew up, murdered his entire family, and pledged himself to being a Sith. He saw how he manipulated every single event to his liking, becoming Chancellor and orchestrating the Clone Wars. It was all him. As Anakin snapped back to reality, he was hyperventilating. He needed to inform the Jedi Council. Without hesitation, he makes contact with the Council and tells him absolutely everything that Palpatine is the Sith Lord. Anakin was on the other side of the galaxy from Coruscant, meaning that he was too far away from Coruscant to assist the Jedi in taking down Palpatine. The Jedi Council, who has already had their suspicions of the Chancellor, left at once. Every member of the Council went together to his office and informed Palpatine that he was under arrest. When Palpatine refused, he ignited his lightsaber to defend himself, but was ultimately killed by Mace Windu and the combined strength of the entire council, to which he stood no chance. After Anakin received word that Palpatine had been defeated, and soon the Clone Wars would be over, he thanked the Ang-T monks for helping them. When they informed Anakin that he wasn't done with his training, he told them that he didn't want to finish. He believed that this ability was too much power for one individual to possess and he didn't trust himself with it. Before he fully mastered this ability, he walked away from training. Anakin returned back to the galaxy, where he was hailed as a hero. The Republic won the Clone Wars and the galaxy was safe, all thanks to Anakin's brilliance. The exposure of Palpatine as the Sith Lord behind the Clone Wars sent shockwaves throughout the Republic. People couldn't believe it. Many people campaigned to be the next Supreme Chancellor, but there was only one person ready for the job. Padme Amidala was elected as the new Chancellor, as she strived to ensure peace for the galaxy. At the beginning of her new term, she gave birth to twins and the couple would be forced to reveal their secret marriage. Despite causing some controversy that the Chancellor and Jedi were together, it was eventually accepted. The Council was upset with Anakin, but they could see how he had achieved balance and allowed him to maintain his attachment and actually led him to becoming a better Jedi. They had made an exception for Anakin to not be expelled. In rare cases, Jedi were allowed to have a family, such as Kiari Mundi, who had a wife and kids. Anakin's children would be raised in the Jedi Temple as Jedi, but also kept their connection to their mum, Padme. Because of Anakin, the Jedi realized that there could be another path for them that wasn't so strict on forbidding attachments. Anakin had achieved everything he ever wanted. The galaxy was safe and his family was complete, all thanks to his hard work and perseverance. If you enjoyed today's video, you must watch what if the Jedi Council trained Anakin and what if Anakin started his own Jedi Order. Please consider becoming a member for $1 a month. It really helps us out. Thank you all for watching and may the force be with you.